हरे कृष्णा मैं नवनीत व्यास एस्ट्रो चैनल में आप लोगों का बहुत बहुत स्वागत करता हूँ एंड टुडे वी हैव बाबा जी फ्रॉम यू नो एक्सोटिक एस्ट्रोलॉजी वन ऑफ द मोस्ट स्पिरिचुअली एनलाइटेंड सोल्स यू नो वर्किंग अराउंड प्लान एंड कॉन्सुलेशन हु नीड्स नो इंट्रोडक्शन एंड वी आर सो डिलाइटेड टू हैव यू हेयर बाबा जी नो हरे कृष्णा वेलकम टू आर चैनल सर very good to talk to you sir and this is the first time we are meeting and uh, yeah as we were having this conversation before uh, we started the recording i was really amazed uh, by the things that we discussed about uh, your gurus and the tradition that you come from and uh, yeah i am looking forward for our discussion today yeah prabhuji and uh, what 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 have you brought the, from your divine intelligence for us today on our channel <laughs> now i just try to share whatever i had uh, learned from my uh, gurus and teachers by grace of god so today i was thinking um, to discuss on this topic about uh, destiny and uh, free will and karma and uh, the from a horoscope perspective right and uh, the viewers of this channel or um, as i we discussed we'll upload this in my channel also yes. so for viewers from both the channels can give feedback yeah uh, in the comments that if they really like this video uh, and the concepts then the next video i can also record again yeah uh, with some examples yeah. uh, with yeah. like four five example charts yeah uh, so uh, the thing is uh, we we are aware of uh, these two terms first one is uh, destiny and then we have the other one is a uh, free will yes. and then there is a word called karma there is a word called bhagya these are all very confusing sometimes absolutely uh, especially is uh, these three words one is destiny the other one is karma the other one is bhagya <laughs> and then there is prarabdha you know people yeah. think all oh, these things means you know something is destined and it's all done i can't do anything yeah uh, but actually it's not like that yeah. uh, we have to draw fine lines between these words so for uh, so for example uh, if you talk of karma the word karma as uh, in astrology uh, it refers to our 10th house primarily right but people they think that karma is only referring to 10th house yeah. that's actually not the case the 10th the karma of the 10th house represents that type of karma which impacts not only me but impacts everybody else around the world yeah so, so because that's the house of name and fame so when you get name and fame what happens whenever you say something 10 people or maybe 1000 people they will listen right, right. so i have a power by using my karma my uh, speech or my actions to impact somebody's life either in a positive or in a negative way yeah so in that sense it is called the house of karma but every house in jyotish is the house of karma actually absolutely not it's not only the 10th house now the first house is representing the karma that we have with ourselves ourselves in, in the sense this with this body yeah and that is why uh, many times people uh, they tell me that oh sir i feel life is not worth living i want to go and give up my life yeah well uh, i tell them this is very sinful according to the scriptures you cannot just go and end your life why yeah. because then you are spoiling the karma that you have with this body correct you, yeah you may say that oh but this body is mine right i can do whatever i wish with this body right. so why am i accountable Yeah. why am i accountable for my own body I, i i can cut my finger i can do whatever i want right why should i be accountable well that's the problem you see because the vedic scriptures they tell us that this body is not ours right. we we are temporarily occupying this body we are the caretakers of this body and when i say we i mean to say the soul the soul is uh, residing in this body temporarily and therefore the soul's responsibility is to take care of the body right. body and the first house also represents our thought process intelligence all these things right. so if you if we are uh, learning bad things we are spoiling which house people say oh we are we are spoiling the fifth house ninth house but primarily we are spoiling the first house because it's the head right 
So therefore, uh, it's very important that we have a good karma. Then we have the second house. This is the karma with the family and uh, anybody who you feel like a family. It's not only uh, your parents or your birth family. It can also be your in-laws, your relatives, anybody and everybody. Right. Very close friends who you feel like a family. They are also the second house. Second house yeah. yeah. So we, we know all the house. So and I think uh, if I can add a little bit here, yeah. it's uh, that every house has a 10th house from itself. Correct. Correct. Right. So if, if we consider that the 10th house is house of karma for the lagna, then yeah. we have 11th house, which is society, you know, with the second yes. house. That's the karma right. of the second house. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's the thing. Every house has a karma and every house has a 10th house from itself, as you very beautifully explained. So the thing is, we have to understand what is the meaning of the word karma. So karma has many meanings. One meaning uh, in India, people say, you know, mera karma kharab hai. Or if somebody goes to a jochi, they say, you know, to karam kharab hai. What, what that person basically means is, yeah. I mean, irrespective of the fact his or her karma is good or bad. But what, what do people mean when they say, my karma is not good, maybe in case of, you know, marriage or uh, career or health. Sometimes people say, my karma is bad in this area. Okay. Yeah. Which means uh, regarding that aspect of life uh, in the past, in, either in this life or maybe in their previous lifetimes, yeah. they have made such decisions which uh, have not worked, which, which were not supposed to be made uh, for a, a long term success, right. which is, or it could have happened that they had, they had taken shortcuts. Right. And by that, they had earned a lot of money. Right. And now in this life, they are facing the repercussions and their money is just going for no reason. Sometimes they can't identify. Like sometimes people tell me during consultation that, sir, sir, I can't earn, uh, I, I don't have money basically. Yeah. So then I ask them, all right, the, where's the problem? Are you not able to earn money or are you not able to save money? That is so true. Because it's not how much you earn, it's how much you save ultimately, right? Absolutely. So, and then people tell me, yeah, yeah, sir, my earning is okay. I earn good, decent. But the problem is I can't save. I save. Due to yeah. some reason or the other, the money is just going. Or my resources, my time, my energy is just going. You know? right. So very less, uh, I've seen very less people complaining about not being able to earn money. But right. most of the complaints are, I have, uh, I have a lot of earnings, but I have... PMIs, I have loans, I have so many things, mortgages, and it's all gone, done and dusted. Right. So, so basically when somebody says that my karma is bad in this area, it means that they did something wrong and now they are getting the same reaction. So in that sense, they mean to say that my actions were bad, now I'm getting the negative reaction. Or sometimes right. people also say, by God's grace, my karma is good in this area, which means they might have done uh, good things or in case of finances maybe they would have given so much in charity yeah. and now uh, they are relatively easily getting money or yeah. financial security then compared to somebody else okay? right. and karma in another sense also means our current actions right. because either you go to the past or present or future ultimately it's all about actions right we, we tend to talk of karma in a very interchangeable way. Sometimes we say karma, we mean the past, we mean the present. Or sometimes when people are about to uh, have their child born, then they say, then they ask us as astrologers, sir, uh, what will be the karma of my child? Right. That means they're talking of future. So the word karma is used interchangeably. And then we have uh, something known as destiny. And destiny and prarabdha, these are these are very similar. Yeah. Destiny means the repercussions of our good or bad karma, which will come in this life or in some other life, or which has already come in some other lifetime also, okay. which is something which is beyond our control, which means that we cannot change it. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, and then we have free will. Free will, uh, what is free will? Free will means... Uh, you have a particular destiny. So you had performed a particular karma in a past life. And then because of that, now you are, your karma shapes your destiny. Okay? Right, right. Now then that destiny is coming to you. It's like a gift which you get. 
yeah. <laughs> it's like a surprise gift you know somebody knocks your door ting tong and you're yes. like oh, who's that raat ke 12 baje kisne door knock kiya and then you go and open and you see my god it's like a uh, check what you know maybe 1000 lakhs of rupees or you know or maybe it's a bill of uh, 1000 rupees <laughs> for some reason i don't understand right. anyways right. but now when you have received your destiny when you have received your destiny right. in the present what do you do now you like what is the it. what is the next karma that you perform Right. And the reactions of your past karma comes. That is exactly what is free will. Now, what people think free will is in today's modern Kali Yuga, people think that free will is the competitor of destiny because by free will they can break their destiny, they yeah. can control their destiny, they can change their destiny. Right? <laughs> That is why you will always get this question all the time: which is more powerful, free will or destiny? Yeah. And most of the speakers in YouTube. uh because to sound good they say oh yes you can do everything do it, yeah. you can just break your destiny and go and destiny is a matter <laughs> but you know what i think yeah. if uh, we had that much amount of free will i think the astrology would not exist right i mean i mean see just just uh, you know taking forward your example which is a superb example is that some you got to check off like 1000 crores okay this is the good karma that you've done now as a guru as a mentor if you find a guru which is in your destiny again right uh he will tell you how to react to those 1000 crores exactly right so that is the only free will that we've got exactly. right exactly. not not more than that not less than that right yes. so i believe karma is you know i've read in one of in one of the lectures uh, my guru ji has explained is that karma is kar which is to do and ma is coming from moon okay so that is why you're always born in the nakshatra of moon right <laughs> so that you can perform the reactions mentally and we've got physical body to give those reactions mentally that is the karma Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. And and then if you think that you can do a lot of things with your hard work and this and that, probably I don't believe in that. I used to believe in that 15 years ago, right? But at this stage, I don't believe in that. What I believe is even the hard work that you do in your life is also a bliss, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so if we read the Bhagavad Gita, there uh, we'll come to the astrology part. But going yeah. to the origin of karma and the yeah. summary of all the Upanishads, which is Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> Bhagavad Gita is a very interesting uh, <laughs> conversation. So what happens there? Arjuna asks to Krishna that he tells Krishna that oh, I can't fight. You know, I cannot kill all these uh, big big. people one of them is my grandfather one of them is my guru i am here because of them without them i am nobody basically that is what he means and all these uh, crooked cousins which he had they are they may be crooked but you know yeah cousins after all this you know <laughs> <laughs> so then he tells to krishna that uh, i can't kill it's not not only that i can't kill but he says my gandhi was slipping from my hands yeah darpanya to to pahata swabhava he says and then krishna says that you you should not be concerned with the results krishna tells that you should only be concerned with the actions now right. essentially what krishna tells him and the acharyas also explain that lord krishna he had this he want he wanted to annihilate all the uh, evil forces from the earth yes and that is why he had orchestrated this kurukshetra war absolutely and that would anyways happen even if arjuna would not fight that would anyways happen absolutely. right yeah. he would have got any done to somebody else maybe right okay? because he had taken a vow i won't lift up, lift any weapon Then what did Arjuna do? Is is it like a match fixing? <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like it's like already something is destined. And then what am I doing here? Yeah. So then 
Uh, if you read the commentaries of different acharyas regarding this, so the acharyas explain that um, Arjuna he has actually uh, he he has not fought because he uh, wanted good results. He wanted the throne, or he wanted to win. He wanted to be on the good side. But he did it as a service to Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna told him because that was his duty as a Chhatriya to fight and to punish those who had done wrong. Yeah. Because if these people would live, they would create mayhem in the society in the in the future again. Yeah. So therefore, free will is always there with us. Sometimes people say, oh, I don't have free will or maybe I have free will. Of course, there are many ways uh, using astrology as we will discuss now. You can see what extent the free will is there but we have to understand one thing very clearly as you very beautifully pointed out that if you get a check of one crore rupees or thousand crores every person will use it differently yeah. a person who is uh, doing charity work or who is uh, spreading spiritual knowledge that person will use it differently even for charity, in the, even in the scriptures, it is said in the, our Vedic scriptures that even if you give one gold coin, because earlier times there was no money, yeah. right? only gold <laughs> coins. Yeah. If you give one gold coin to any random person who does not use it for any bad purposes, you will, in next life, you will get back that same gold coin. Wow. You'll get back that one gold coin. Yeah. If you give it to somebody who is very desperate and who is very needy, at that moment, somebody comes and asks you to give me something. And then you give that person. Then what happens? You will get it 10 times more. Okay. Now, if somebody is desperate, but because that person wants to serve society, yeah. then that same gold coin, if you donate to that person, then you, you get 100 times more. Wow. So one gold, because your that one gold coin is about to serve 100 people. So you are actually not giving one gold coin. Right. You are giving 100 gold coins. So that's the measurement, you see. Yeah. And it is said if somebody is uh, giving one gold coin or one rupee, one donation to somebody who is, you know, spreading spiritual knowledge at a large scale, then yeah. uh, the scriptures say it will come back to you in unlimited amounts, yeah. in ways and amount that you cannot imagine of. Yeah. Because you are doing some, you are contributing in something which is much beyond, you know, which is beyond everything. So therefore, when we are about to use our free will, it is very important that we are knowledgeable of the scriptures yeah. because it, ha it has happened so many times that so many people, they have got some donations or they have got some charity or they got some lottery sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And then they are with all this money Especially, uh, I was reading, uh, like in India, there was this episode, you know, Kaun Banega Karolpati yeah. or something, something, yeah. Yeah. something like this. Yeah. Or in the West also, there's this, you know, who, who wants to be a millionaire or some yeah. contest like this. So I was reading the uh, one article which said, you know, most of these people who got rich overnight, they eventually, most of them have lost, lost their money. Yeah. Why? Because they were not able to manage it, which means they had used their free will. Now, destiny gave, gave them this uh, beautiful package, you know, overnight you became a millionaire, for example, yeah. or, a, or a crore yeah. in India, or maybe yeah. sometimes you won five crores or seven crores or 10 crores maybe. Yeah. But then you did not have the necessary discipline in your life. Yeah. You did not have that necessary mind control and that intelligence, discipline, mind control and intelligence these three are very important yes so without these three we cannot use our free will in a proper way it is just not possible even if we have all good things we will put it to the garbage yes. it will become it will be wasted it is like saying okay once upon a time i had done something now i'm getting all the fruits but because i am not having that discipline now that sense control, that level of intelligence and maturity. Right. Therefore, I'm not able to use this. So then what happens? All that is wasted. Okay. In worst case, the opposite can happen. If, imagine you were destined to get a lot of money or you get money very easily in this life yeah. because of your past life good deeds and you go and waste it on alcohol. Then what's happening? That same good deed is now enforcing all the bad deeds in you. Yeah. If you did not have money, if you were a beggar, you would not be able to go and buy alcohol, right? Yeah. Why are you able to do it? Because 
you had done some good activity and that is what the scriptures explain that when somebody does some good activity why why does it happen that the returns are multifold as i said sometimes you give a gold coin you get it 100 times back why yeah because the law of karma encourages good karma right so okay. you give one then you get back 100 then you again again give then you get more then you give again more so it's like a cycle you see never ending cycle okay yeah yeah. yeah. So, and I think yeah. like, uh, you know, like this is also law of nature. I have one example that one of uh, a very nice sage in Himachal, I got an opportunity to sit with him. He said, he said, Navneet, like if you have one seed of a mango tree, okay, just one seed, that one coin that you're talking about, you put it and it will give you hundreds of mangoes for, you know, hundreds of years. Yes. Right. The, the only thing is that the intention behind that mango tree is to serve the society, to fulfill the... Yeah. Right. So this is law of the nature. And I, I have personally experienced this. The day I got attached to the plants, to the birds, to the mother nature, to all the creatures around me, right? The day I started feeding them, started connecting to them, the day Mother Nature started giving it back immensely. Wow. Right? That very day it started. And there was no looking back. You know, just like the family, I go out on my backyard. I make sure all my kadam trees, which my Guruji had asked me to put it, right? They are intact. I, I you know, I can tell you the number of leaves that we have. That if, if one or two goes away, right? I'm concerned that, oh, I mean, there'll be two more coming, right? Okay. So if you have that kind of a connection, it's like law of giving, and then Mother Nature will give you back exponentially. That is so true that you've said. It's extremely beautiful the way you've uh, rephrased it. And I can feel it. Yes. Yes, and, and it always happens. So every time I get uh, these questions that, sir, you know, can you please tell me, in my horoscope, is it all destined or do I have free will? You know, how do I know and all this? But very rarely have I encountered one person or maybe never in this life who has asked me, Sir, I don't care if I have free will or not in this life or how much do I have? How much is destined? How much is not? But can you please tell me that whatever free will I have, what are the things that I can do in my life? What are the changes that I can bring in myself so that I can use that we will in the best possible way? <laughs> <laughs> I As think this, this is the question of the century that you've said today on this on this platform. Yeah. Fantastic. So as they say, make the best use of the of a bad <laughs> bargain. <laughs> very nice, very nice. So uh, so when we are talking of free will here, then yeah. it's very important. Uh, we have the necessary and I gave these parameters and by this you can connect astrology here. Yeah. So for example, um, if in your chart you have, see, see th there are primarily these houses. We have the fifth house, yeah. which is the house of knowledge, which yeah. is also the house of experience. Yeah. So for example, uh, many times people do many things, but then if you ask them, okay, so what's the conclusion at the end? What did you understand? The person will be like, oh, sir, uh, I don't know. Karna tha kar diya humne. Bolna tha bol diya. Like, I didn't understand anything, right? Mm -hmm. So the wisdom that you get, not only religion, spirituality, or modern science, yeah. scientific studies, for no. anything in life, for anything and everything, that's the fifth house. The wisdom that you finally get, yeah. that wisdom which you get from your experience, which helps you to make better decisions in the future. And that is why fifth house is the house of intelligence. Yes. Yes. And fifth house is also the house of mantra, diksha, and it is also the house of uh, scriptural studies. Okay. Yes. Why? Why is it the house of scriptural studies? So that you can go to the scriptures. Like, for example, you can go to the Ramayana and you can read about Lord Ram who was Mariana Purushottam. Yes. The perfect among the human beings, although he was not a human, he was uh, he is Vishnu himself, God himself, but he acts as if he's a human being to give lessons. Yeah. 
Yes. So then how did he act? How did his uh, great devotees like Hanuman, Jambavan, Jatayu, how did they act? Yeah. What did they do in such a situation? Can I do something similar? Of course, I may not be able to replicate <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah. what they did. Yeah. At least in essence, I can try to do what they did. And that is where the fifth house comes in. So if you have uh, planets, if prominent planets in your chart are linked with your fifth house, yeah. then what happens is you have a relate your ability to gain uh, knowledge from the scriptures or even from your life experiences uh, is very good. And that helps you to make better decisions in life. That helps you to use your free will in a proper way. Okay, yeah. I did this, then I suffered. Yeah. He did this, he suffered. She did this, she suffered. Now, if I do this again in future, I, I will also suffer. That's the fifth house, you see. And then, you know what? one second, I, I'll forget because this is so beautiful. Uh, Babaji, fifth house is 10th from the eighth house. Exactly. Right? We, where we've got all the scriptures, all the, you know, occult, all the shastras. It's in the eighth house. And you count 10 places from there, you reach the fifth house. That is okay. where everything is getting manifested. Right? And second thing, I remember that, you know, uh, I've, I've read somewhere that you cannot become Rishi in Kali Yuga. It's, it's next to impossible. But you can always think like a Rishi. Right? Which you just said. Like, I mean, you cannot be Hanuman or something. Right? But you can yes. think like him. That's it. Yes. That The only reaction of thinking like Rishis will make you you know, reach to moksha or close to the moksha at least, right? We'll be out of this vicious circle of free will. <laughs> For example, Hanuman, what was his life's first priority and what was his only desire to, to, to please Lord Ram, to make him happy, that's all. So in our situation, if we have that, or not even to the extent what he had, that is also not possible. But even if we have a drop or 1% of that desire that he had, then also our life is successful, right? Absolutely. And so we can do that in uh, any way that we feel good, okay? So, or, and what our guru suggests. So, of course, then we come to the ninth house, which is again the house of free will, right. which which doesn't mean that if you, have, if you have a planet in ninth house, you know, you will never suffer or you will only... <laughs> it doesn't mean that. It means that uh, what whichever planet is linked to the ninth house... Yeah which means it is conjunct the ninth lord or being aspected by the ninth lord or it is sitting in the ninth house or it is in the nakshatra of the ninth lord, all these conditions. Then what happens is, suppose there is a scenario in your life, good scenario, bad scenario, average scenario or extreme yeah. scenario, all the four scenarios. Then you are blessed by God because of your karma and by Sukriti that you have got. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that some guide or some guru, not necessarily some spiritual guru, but some guide or some coach or some counselor, some mentor will come and help you in that regard. Wow. Yeah, yeah that is why you will always see if seventh lord is in the ninth or ninth lord is in the seventh or seventh lord and ninth lord are conjunct, uh, depending on the degrees of course. Then you will see sometimes that these people whenever they have problems in married life, they are more likely to approach a marriage counselor or somebody like this. You know? yeah. Because the ninth house is a very interesting house. The ninth house is the house of God. And God is like, he's so high, you can never cross him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because one of the names of uh, Lord Vishnu, he is, you know, Asam Urdhva, which means, yeah. Asama means there's nobody equal to him or Urdhva or above him. He's, yeah. he's, uh, he's beyond yes. so so ninth house is like the topmost house okay yeah, yeah. then that is the house where you need to go and go down yes. it's, it may not be necessarily to some god or some religious uh, entity but it can be to anybody to your some senior within your organization or some senior within your same family it can be yeah. he or she can be so then that that person to whom you are going down, that person also has a fifth house. Yeah. Now you 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 are bypassing. Now your own fifth house is a combination of your uh, your own experiences. 
Hi. But that person also has a fifth house. Your ninth house also has a fifth house. So yeah. the fifth house uh, of your ninth house, which is the experience of all your gurus and all your mentors. Imagine you have a mentor or a guru who has stayed 40 years, 50 years, you know, in any 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 sector, IT or health or spirituality, meditation, whatever it is. Then you have the power to use those uh, those uh, those lessons from his or her fifth house into your life. Wow. And that How becomes many... the lagna, right? The exactly. fifth house from the ninth is you yourself. Yeah. Wow, yeah. this is this is amazing. I mean, see anyone who's watching this video, right? If you just watch it twice, you'll understand what <laughs> how deep he's saying it. He said that the ninth house of your guru has a fifth house, which could be you. Yes. So beautiful. So one, the first house, as uh, as uh, it is said, it is uh, dhimahi, as Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, first chapter, first loka says, no? satyam param dhimahi, it says about Lord Vishnu. So he is intelligence, and that is what is also Jupiter, and that is why he gets Digba in the ascendant, yeah. which means you you are, what's actually the fifth house? If you see from the ninth house, yeah. it is actually the fifth house of the Guru, right? Yeah. So it is the knowledge that your guru has got from his guru. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, and, only and, what astrology means. And probably he's got that knowledge from the 12th house karma. Because, you know, ninth house is 10th from the 12th house. Correct, 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 correct. Right. So the, the trine of 4, 8 and 12 is fulfilled. You know, my guru used to say, Navneet, the first house is your buddhi. Right. The fourth house is your heart, which is Shuddhi. Okay. Okay. The seventh house is where you multiply and expand, which is Vriddhi. Vriddhi. Okay. Vriddhi. We are, you know, multiplying and, you know, getting exactly. family. Right. And the tenth house is where you achieve things, is the Siddhi. Wow. Okay. So, Buddhi, Shuddhi, Vriddhi. And Siddhi is the internal quadrant. One, four, yeah. seven, and ten. And that is why uh, the scriptures always advise that uh, you, you should direct your life depending on the instructions of the Guru. Yes. Because uh, the Guru actually knows what is good and what is good for you, what is best for you, depending on your experience with the Guru after all and depending on your own spiritual practices. Yeah. And then we have another house, which is the house of free will, which is none other than the 11th house. Yeah. Why? Because 11th house is the house of fulfillment of desire. Yeah. So then now your desire is fulfilled. You are happy maybe, or maybe not. But then what you do with this? <laughs> I think this is what? one of the most dangerous houses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I the moment I look at a planet without even looking at it is a Mesh Lagna or it is a Vrishab Lagna or uh, it is whatever uh, Lagna, I believe as if the 11th house is the biggest Badaka for anything that you want to do in your life. Even it is a badhika for your free will also. Yes. Yes. If if the person's mind and senses are not under control, which is very apparent in Kali Yuga especially, yeah. if because people are not having spiritual inquiry, yeah. then yes, then this same 11th house becomes, as you said, yeah. a badhika and it, it poses obstructions because then what happens is your your desires just keep increasing. Okay, I want I wanted to become a millionaire, now I want to become a billionaire. Now I want to become a trillionaire. But then the question yeah. is, what do you do after becoming a millionaire? Can you can you help million people? Now, when I say millionaire, I'm not talking in a monetary sense, okay? Yeah. Yeah. You might be have helping one million people, even then you are a millionaire. You don't have to have one million dollars uh, in your bank account. <laughs> that is so true, yeah. You, yeah. If you are having, if you are helping, you know, lakhs of people, then you are a lakhpati. Yeah. If you are helping crores of people. You are a karupati, of course. Yeah. So, therefore, eleventh house again uh, is this house where everything comes and stops. Our aim is fulfilled. Depending on which house the eleventh lord is, or which planets are in the eleventh, depending on the horoscope, and then 
it is like we have achieved the we have received the fruit of our karma yeah of course our karma in this life and of course combined with the destiny so for yeah. example in a class there are 10 students or 100 students each one of them is studying more or less in a similar rhythm or maybe at least half of the members in the class they are studying in a similar rhythm yeah. but then only one becomes uh, fast right only yeah. one gets proposition so uh, everybody aspire that yes <laughs> my desire is i should be number one in the class yeah you don't get it even if you study the same why yeah. because your efforts your karma in this life coupled with your existing destiny if you are destined to get some name fame yeah. some recognition then that will happen and what happens is you may study 10 people may study the same things but then uh, you, you may be good in some area and in the exam those same questions will come and then you will exit although you were same uh, in comparison to another guy yeah. so that's what is the 11th house and then we also have the 10th house the 10th house is very important because the 10th house is the house where we make uh, the most important decisions yeah. it is it is uh, in matters of our career or yeah. anything really not yeah. only yeah yeah, yeah. And even in career, if you see people, those who have really succeeded, they have really made tough decisions in their life. Yeah. Yeah. Many of them, they have cut off their family if required, their friends, their relatives, you know, their colleagues, they have left companies. They have made very tough decisions on themselves. Yeah. So therefore, if you have these four houses linked to majority of your planets, to most of your planets, then what it means is that, again, it doesn't mean you have more free will. It means, irrespective of whatever is going on in your life, you have a greater capacity, a greater yeah. probability yeah. to use your free will in a proper way. Yeah. Because these houses are somehow linked, the trines, the fifth and the ninth, they are linked with your inner knowledge. Yes. And the tenth and the eleventh, they are linked with the external world. Because... Yeah. Everybody is wanting to manifest what is inside in the outside. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. These houses give you an opportunity. Okay. Yeah. That yes, I have achieved what I wanted. But now what is next? Okay. Because as I said about the 11th house, if somebody had done a lot of good karma, then they may get a lot of money in this life. Yeah. Yes. But then they are wasting it on alcohol. So yeah. Okay, yeah. that... 11th house, that free will, that is taking them down. So this, because of this current action in this life, they might suffer in the next life Absolutely. or in the next life or even in this life. You know, the doctor will call you and say, oh, yeah. my dear, you're having liver cirrhosis. So, or maybe any other disease. You know, why only the liver, of course? Yeah, yeah. And then you know that, yes, I, I got so much, but I wasted it all. So therefore... Within astrology, that is why Parastar Muni would say the fifth and the ninth, they are known as Lakshmi Sthan. Yes. Why do they say? Now, when people read this, uh, there was one uh, young guy, he <laughs> had watched my YouTube videos and he read some, oh, fifth. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it was very enthusiastic. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe you have some prominent planets there, right? Yeah. Except, I have my son in the fifth house, my moon is in the ninth house. My <laughs> Lord is conjunct the fifth Lord. My Atma Karaka is with the ninth Lord. And he said, So that means I'm going to become a billionaire in this life because it's Dhan Yoga, it's Lakshmi Yoga. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, Really? <laughs> <laughs> you might become, who knows? But the thing is, that is not the type of Lakshmi which that passed. you're talking about, yes. Yeah, Parasha Lakshmi Yoga, actually, see, what is basically Lakshmi Ji straight? Yeah. Lakshmi Devi or any Lakshmi Yoga has the ability to sustain you. Sustenance yeah. is the word for Lakshmi Yoga. Yeah. Yeah. Now, somebody may say, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, because money sustains us in this world, right? <laughs> like, it has to be a yoga related to money. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. But Parasha is very clear in this. He doesn't say it is a Dhan Yoga. No. Okay? Yes. Dhan Yoga is different. Yes. Dhan Yoga is when your yes. planets are linked with the second, second level. and the 11th house. Yes. Yeah. And it is Dhan Yoga. He is very, he's very clear. <laughs> but the problem 
uh, in Kali Yuga is we misinterpret Lakshmi as uh, something to do with money or resources, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then even if you talk of Lakshmi at a level of sustenance, what kind of sustenance is it if it is not money, right? Yeah. Well, it's the sustenance from the fifth house and the ninth house. The ninth house is like the wisdom of the Guru, yeah. by which you can sustain in any position that you are. Yes. Either you are a, you either you you are a beggar in the streets, or you are a multi-billionaire. You can still sustain with the knowledge of the Guru. Yeah. Why? Because that knowledge tells you that you are anyways not this body even if you are a beggar or if you are a very rich person you are yes. going to very soon leave this body right and who knows what you will be in the next life yes. Yes. then this knowledge is there with you yes. this knowledge will help you to sustain even if you do not yes. have because yes. the, the trait of money is uh, as they say you know it's chanchala which means yes. it is there sometimes it is not there not there sometimes it's with me tomorrow it's with him or <laughs> Or maybe it's with your neighbor sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know what? With, uh, yeah, you know, with this thing, what I have taken uh, from the, these 15, last 15 minutes is, uh, Babaji, that probably the real Lakshmi and the sustenance that you're talking about. See, we when, when somebody leaves the body, we do the Kriya Karam. So I think it is the fifth house and the ninth house that goes along with you as a right as a kriya karam that we do see kriya karam means that they are sending all the kriyas and karmas that you have done along with your soul to the third world so i think that they are taking the fifth and the ninth house along so which is the real lakshmi right exactly. that that's one and second one a very beautiful thing that you've said is that in the 10th house people have sacrificed so many things the people who've achieved so many things in their life, right? Now, as per Jyotish, the 10th house is the cremation ground, right? The, the cremation is the 10th house, 100%, because it is Capricorn, Makar, right. right? So that is cremation. So what is the most difficult thing we do in our life with our you know, near and dear ones is the cremation. Yes, yes. That, that is the biggest sacrifice we can do. You know, I lost my father in 2015. I think the most difficult thing that I could ever imagine, you know, for a parent is the 10th house, right? You sacrifice huge. So that is the highest level of sacrifice, right? That you're giving away, you know, somebody who is, uh, you know, took you in, in, in the hand for so many years and make you walk and speak and eat. And now you're cremating that person. Yeah. That, that's the most difficult thing. And, and the similar sacrifices like Srila Prabhupati, you know, he left and he got so many cardiac arrests during going to the New York. Only thing that sustained him was the ninth house because he was following the gurus, you know, yes. that's it. And, and this is so beautiful. And the sacrifice is coming from the 10th house, the ninth house, the actual Lakshmi is come. The actual Lakshmi is come. It's so beautiful. In the ninth house, ninth house, as they say, it's <clears throat> the higher octave of the fifth house, which is it's fifth from the fifth. Yeah. So that that is like the pinnacle of all Lakshmi's because that that is such a well that you have, which is timeless. Because yes. in this lifetime, you have a lot of money, but then when you die. In next life, if you are born as a cockroach in your own same house, then your grandson or granddaughter can come and trample on you. And then you are no more. Yes. The knowledge of the ninth house, the wisdom, the spiritual maturity. Yes, yes. That continues life after life. That is like an eternal investment. Can you believe? <clears throat> yes. yes. Like a timeless investment. Right. Any, any spiritual activity that you do will always stay with you. Yes. What kind of an investment that is that even this body and the mind, they and even if you go to uh, some other planetary systems, other locas, it will still be there with you. Absolutely. We have so many examples of great personalities in the scriptures. I'll just <clears throat> end one example. Like we have the example of the great sage Narad Muni, who is the guru of most of the great personalities mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So he, in his past life, 
he had served uh, the bhakti vedantas like great spiritually elevated personalities in his past life yeah. and then uh, uh, and then later on he uh, that life just dissolved and then in next life he was born as narad muni his uh, the bhagavatam explains narad muni's body is completely spiritual it is made of satchit ananda fully yeah. spiritual 100% there is no material element involved in it yeah. yeah so why did this happen because that person had done some great spiritual uh, seva in his past life to some great personalities as yeah. rishabh dev says in fifth canto of the shrimad bhagavatam yeah. mahat sevanam ahur vimukteshu yeah. uh, that the service to the great personalities opens the door doors to liberation Yeah. you don't have to go and knock the doors to liberation will open automatically Absolutely. they will come in invite you right yeah. Yeah. so therefore that is the timeless lakshmi that's like the even if you take lakshmi in matter of money or sustenance or investing it's like an invest which is timeless which has nothing to do with this life or next your previous lives or your next lives yeah there's nothing to do with all any lifetime or all the lifetimes combined it will always stay there with you yeah. it will always go with you wherever you are that is the only thing which goes because yeah. krishna says in the gita no, that i am there in everybody's heart as the parmatma yes yes ishwara yes. sarva bhutana hridesya arjuna tishthati yes. i am situated in the region of the heart yes. and whenever we are going to from this body to some other body to some other loka other world whichever tradition you are following or whatever you believe god is all god is the only person who is living with us in this world and who is also living with us yes yes he lives and leaves he lives yes 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 so in this world also you will see sometimes people will live with you but may also they want to live with uh, you yeah they may they, they may some yeah then in this life and when you live they may live here and they will not go with you but what krishna says i stay with you when you are here and when you go i also go with you so i live with you and i live with you wow yeah. amazing yeah. this is beautiful that is something which you will not find anywhere in no house no planet nothing you will just find it in the ninth house okay yeah, yeah. so i guess uh, this was <laughs> like a uh, introduction and uh, yeah i think uh, it's yeah. already 45 yeah, minutes yeah, yeah yeah and then one yeah. last thing babajit i i have one thing so is that you know why raja ram wanted to take the kark lagna you know the raja ram wanted to take kark lagna because the 10th house from the kark is the first house of the kalpurush the okay eight, You, you understand so he yes. took the fourth yes. house that he'll do the karma right he'll yes. showcase he'll have one wife he'll have all dharma whatever raja ram wanted to say and he said that my 10th house will be the mesha right and when kal purush kundli would be made the mesha would be the first house which is you that yeah. is how you should live right so that was Excellent. the that was his intention behind taking birth in the karka <laughs> so, uh, sometimes somebody had asked me you know, lord ram is surya vanshi you know <laughs> he had given you know, some leo lagna or something you know maybe sun in it or something but we, we don't find that much you know yeah very interesting yeah and yeah it was a great time uh, uh, yeah. talking to you and thank you very much for sharing all the beautiful thank points you. Uh, thank you sir thank you it's such a delight to have you and uh, you know i feel blessed with such an enlightened soul you are sir right and we have many more to come and if you really like this video please uh, subscribe to channel and like the video comment because sir has said that you know we need your feedbacks and comments so that we can come up with the next video with the charts all right so till then hare krishna thank you very very much sir